Hello, this is Jonathan Gardner, and this is Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics, and we are in the final chapter, chapter 17. So if you've been following this series all along, um, I took quite a while to do this. It's been over a year, I think, but I'm finally here. Uh, I appreciate all of your patience, all of your effort, and you deserve to give yourselves a pat on the back for you know, coming this far in the series. Anyway, this chapter 17 is really curious because it is... Uh, it's a lie. He says determinants, but this is really linear algebra. And I think the reason why he titles it determinants is because 90% of the reason that you're going to learn linear algebra is to get the determinant out of it. So if you're studying physics or you're studying some other topic and somehow you run into something tangentially related to linear algebra, the one concept that you really need from this topic is determinants. And so he's titling this with kind of a clickbait title but you're gonna end up learning all about linear algebra in this chapter. So let's get started. Section one has to do with matrices. Uh, matrix, a matrix is an array of four numbers. Here, let's give an example. So we have A is equal to four numbers. We have the number A, we have the number B, we have the number C, we have the number D. And we call this a matrix. This is a two by two matrix. And a matrix is just a combination of numbers that comes in columns and rows. Um, you might see this in the form of tensors, right? If you're studying more advanced physics, you might run into tensors, but we call it a matrix here, okay? This is, so we, we had the concept of pairs for points in the plane, so we had R2, right? We said we have points in the plane, XY pairs, right? Well, matrices are a more generalized form of this pair concept. What happens when you have an arbitrary of numbers arranged in an arbitrary of way, okay? And so in our two by two matrix, um, we can look at, let's take an example of a two by two matrix and let's look at it in different ways. So this two by two matrix has a three in the upper left hand corner. It has a minus five, negative five in the upper right hand corner. And on the bottom, it has a two on the left and a seven on the right, okay? And there's many ways that we can look at this matrix, okay? We have two rows. So we have the top row, which is three and minus five. That's a pair of numbers. And then we have the bottom row, which is two and seven. That's also a pair of numbers. You can think of that as a point or something like that, but it also has columns. So we have the column three, two, and we have the column minus five and seven, okay? So we are gonna call this the first column and this the second column. And unlike in computer programming with Python, which is zero based, we're gonna use one base. So this is column number one, and this is column number two, so that matches exactly. And this is the first row, or row number one, and this is the second row, row number two, okay? All right, now when we have a matrix that is only one column or one row, we call it a vector. So these are all very special kinds of matrices that we call vectors. And in my mind, this word vector is deceptive. I think um, when I'm doing physics and I use something called a vector, it means something very different than what these mean. So even though these ideas are correlated, um, when I'm doing physics, I'm thinking of a direction and a magnitude. And when you're doing linear algebra, the vector is just a single column or single row, okay? And we call these obviously column vectors and we call those row vectors, okay? The sh their shape is important. Right. All right. Uh, let's do another example. Let's take the matrix. Let's use this nice purple color. We have the matrix minus six and eight and five comma minus three. And again, we notice that this is a two by two matrix. And we have the two column vectors. The two column vectors are minus six and eight and eight and minus three. And we have two row vectors. The row vectors are minus six and eight and five and minus three, okay? If we were to add column vectors, okay? Let's suppose, I'm just gonna start with an example here. So let's say, what does it mean to add column vectors? So we have the column vector minus one, six, and we're going to add to that three comma minus two, okay? And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna add across. So minus one plus three, that gives you two and six, minus two, that gives you four. So we just add across when we're adding column vectors, okay? If we were to multiply a column vector by a number, so let's take minus seven, we might call this a scalar, 
because it isn't a matrix, it's just a single number. And we multiply that a column vector, let's say 2, 3, by seven, minus 7. And what we're going to do is multiply each component by that minus 7. So minus 7 times 2 is a minus 14, and minus 7 times 3 is minus 21. Okay, so that is the product of minus 7 and the column vector 2, 3. Okay, let's talk about notation. So when we have a matrix, in this case a 2 by 2 matrix, with four things inside of it, these things we call them components. And we're going to say that we have two column vectors, AC and BD. We're going to call this one the first and this one the second. Okay. And in general, when we have a matrix A, we're going to note this with in this, this style, A11, A12, A21, and A22. Okay. So the first subscript, the first number in the subscript tells you which row you're on. And the second number tells you which column you're in. Okay. So let's give an example. Let's suppose that we had our A was equal to 3 minus 5, 7, 1. And so A11 is equal to 3. A21 is equal to 7. A12 is equal to minus 5. And then A22 is equal to 1. Okay. So we can break this up uh, into rows. And we're going to use subscript rows. So A1 is the first row, that's going to be A11, A12, and then A sub 2 is a second row, that's A21 and A22, okay? And then if we do with a superscript, so A superscript 1, that's going to be the column A11, A21, and then A superscript 2 is A12 and A22, okay? That's how that works. Uh, to be honest, I haven't seen this notation used very often. He uses it a couple times in this book, so uh, you'll probably have to get used to it. Okay. Suppose we had a 3x3 three three matrix, right? Well, a 3x3 three three matrix, we would have A11, A12, A13, and then A21, A22, A23, and then A31, A32, and A33. Okay. And obviously, you'll have three columns or three rows, and then you'll have three columns. And I won't spell that out for you, okay? But A sub 1 is going to go this way, A sub 2, A sub 3, and then A with the superscript 1, A superscript 2, A superscript 3 goes that way. Okay, and he gives an example of a 3x3 three three matrix. I don't want to cover it. It's fairly obvious. I think you're probably we're probably beating a uh, horse dead here by going over this in this, this level of detail. You, you, you figured this out, okay? Uh, he does not cover 4x4 four four matrices, but you can imagine what that looks like. Uh, you can probably imagine any size of matrix, okay? One of the basic operations we do with matrices, and at first this seems kind of pointless, but it's called transposition. So suppose you have a matrix A, B, C, D, and we transpose that to the matrix A, C, B, D. Okay, and so what we've done when we've transposed is we've left the diagonal alone and we flipped everything else. Okay, so A and D stay the same, but C and B flip. Okay, a numeric example. Let's use this nice purple here. So we have 3 minus 8 and then 7 and 15. So if we transpose this, what does it become? Well, we're going to keep the 3 and 15 in place and we're going to switch 7 and minus 8. Okay? That's how that works. If we did a 3x3 three three matrix, it gets a little more complicated. So we have 4, minus 3, 2, minus 1, 5, and 7, and then 9, minus 8, and 14. And when we transpose this, the diagonal stays the same. 4, 5, and 14 don't move. Okay? Minus 3 and minus 1 are going to flip. Right? These two numbers here. These two numbers here are going to flip, so 7 and minus 8. And then finally, these two numbers in the corners are going to flip, okay? And that's what the transposition looks like, okay? We can write the transposition using the following notation. Suppose A is equal to the 3x3 three three matrix A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, and A31, A32, 
and then A33, okay? So we will denote the transpose, we'll say T of A. Now, this, the, the notation that I've seen is typically A, T, like that, okay? And so if the transpose of A, so let's use a little curly T there, so the diagonal stays the same, and these guys are gonna flip. So it's gonna be A, one, two, A, one, three, A, two, one, A, two, three, and then A, three, one, this is three, three, A, three, two, right? So that's what the transpose does. Now, a another way that we can describe matrices is we write the matrix like this. We write A, I, J, okay? And what this means is it's a matrix. We don't really know how big it is. In this case, we'd have to t have some other information telling us how big it is. But each element is described by I, J. And so using this notation, it's pretty easy to describe the transpose. It's just A, J, I, right? So we're flipping the elements with the element that has the opposite um, sub uh, subscript. So if you take like, for instance, A232, which should be this guy, well, the new element for A32 is gonna have the subscript flipped, so A23. Okay, that's how that works. This notation uh, is used, I think, heavily in general relativity if you're studying physics. Um, I'm sure that whatever general relativity course you study, they're gonna get you used to this notation and see you how, see, show you how to use it, okay? That is all there is in this section. Um, he is going to ask you to do some exercises that are fairly basic and fairly simple. Just basically testing your knowledge, get used to the notation system. And we'll continue in the next video with section two, talking about determinants. Have a great day. Take care and bye-bye. This video was part of my series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.